Oh, hey. Okay. Well, I uh, my name is Stephanie Nadalny. I am a voice actor and uh, professional singer, um, novelty songwriter, and um, yeah, music lover. Absolutely. So, kind of give me give me a rundown. We um, I'm familiar with your work. Kind of just tell us uh, what you've been in, what we might have heard you in. And uh, kind of talk about the music a little bit too, like uh, yeah, what you've done music-wise. Well, I started with music. I started with singing, and then I did funny voices as a kid, just to embrace that whole thing, just for fun as a kiddo. Awesome. And then I, but I pursued uh, my first passion, which is singing and music, and um, pursued anything and everything involving um, music, singing, and I grew up in. Uh, whatever I could get into growing up, we moved around a lot, so it was a little bit difficult, but. Um, I was involved in as much as I could be as far as theater and um, talent shows, community theater, majored in drama in college. Um, yeah, I just auditioned for anything and everything I'm involving um, singing, dancing and acting. So all of the above. Awesome. Awesome. So did I did I hear a little rumor? Did you end up in Coffeyville, Kansas? For high school? I did. I did. I, you know, my stepdad was transferred um, ever since my parents split and then my mom remarried. I was about seven and we were uh, living down. I was born in Memphis, Tennessee, but uh, we were living in uh, northern Houston, Texas at the time. And then his job had him transferred to small towns all over Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and then back down to the Dallas Fort Worth area. So I moved. Uh, a lot, uh, against like. my will <laughs> but yeah no i did end up in um in coffeeville kansas southeastern um almost i mean just on the border of oklahoma yep. so um just barely into kansas and i was there from eighth middle of eighth grade to almost to the end of my 11th grade year which is a crucial pretty crucial years absolutely as far as you know growing up you really grow up a lot between those ages you know absolutely 13, 16 13, yeah 16, that's a stone's throw from here we're i think it's about an hour and a half two hours away from wichita so that's yeah, pretty cool. I have some friends that, that uh, definitely, you know, moved out of, out of that area and live in that uh, Wichita area. And I'm going to be there in person at one of my conventions coming up. So I'm pretty, I'm looking forward to that. Yep. I'm excited I'm to meet you. Signing in Kansas. Yeah. Yeah. I'll definitely be there to shake your hand as well. Um, awesome. So yeah. let's talk about Dragon Ball. So how did that, how did that come about? Did you get it with an audition or did you like, was it, how did you come about with that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, like I said, I, you know, I had always been involved in, voice acting it was a, a passion of mine but um i had never really sought out as a child to be a voice actor i was doing it all the time anyway so i was imitating everything i heard watching cartoons and um and on tv and i had like a cassette tape recorder so i would carry that everywhere i went and i would record you know people's voices friends voices babysitters voices make my own shows a friend of mine in uh seventh grade uh at that whole summer before eighth grade we got together and recorded the funniest like kind of like radio show interviews and we would make up the characters and go back and forth and um i i just developed an, a, more, a deeper love and passion for that because i was actually creating my own characters and uh, again doing it for fun to pass the time um you know back in the day that's really about all we had is you know cassette tapes and records and record players and then we would run around and ride our bikes um, and maybe play a little bit. We still you know, video games were kind of, you know, the arcades were around about that time. So I'd go to the arcades and do that too. But uh, I developed an affection for it more so around that age and was also very involved in piano lessons and singing. And I was writing my own songs and poetry and keeping a journal. So I was just really immersed in all of those things. And, um, but anything involving singing was my first love. Um, but what ended up happening that got me into uh, professional voice acting. I was performing um, with a professional uh, touring, internationally known show band called Vince Vance and the Valiants. And I okay. was uh, I was actually in my first band at the time when I got the audition for that. And uh, I jumped out of college and on the road instantly when I got the opportunity mm -hmm. to travel with a show band. So yeah, it was yeah. uh, costumes, uh, comedy skits, um, costumes. I mean, it was just everything I've, I've always wanted to do. And uh, I ended up performing with them almost uh, off and on for like 25 years. Cause oh, I, wow. I, once I got on the road, I got that itch and I never wanted to go back. But what, what happened with that whole thing is I was in the Dallas Fort Worth area and, you know, was in a, a big city area where there were more opportunities, which is, you know, great. Now I love it here in Dallas, Fort Worth. Um, I, um, I met, um, 
another performer with a Grammy award winning polka band and they're called Brave Combo out of Denton, Texas, which is where I was living at the time and just commuting to and from Dallas to get on a tour bus mm. <laughs> with a big band, you know, with, you know, 15 other people wow. and uh, all the time. And um, when I was recording um, with that band and performing with them, I ended up in the studio and I was called in to record some vocals for a project that was being produced by Funimation at the time and when I was there I met the producer of Dragon Ball Z um little did I know I didn't know absolutely anything at all <laughs> about anime but he had heard something in my voice that sounded animated and I had done some stuff with Chuck E. Cheese and so uh we exchanged information it was a long time ago I think it was yeah. like 1998 and I got called in for the audition uh, there was not an open call of any kind and so I showed up to the audition very excited to see what that was all about you know you got to audition for anything and everything or you don't ever have a shot at mm -hmm. at, at any really at anything if you don't try right absolutely you get a lot of no's but sometimes you get a, the uh a yes here and there and that's exactly what happened i went in and auditioned for uh female characters that you know i had no, no idea who they were or what they were for but uh that just seemed like the natural thing to do but when i got in i did uh, i did run through those auditions and there were three people in the room kind of like judges it was pretty mm -hmm. high a high stress but they asked me if i could do the voice of a young boy and so i threw out what i thought was sounded like a young boy and i got the role of go on from the ginyu saga and that's where my professional voice acting career began and that was in 1998 and we started uh soon after recording in a little small studio back in the day and one studio one director one adr director and this was like back when we were recording and then rewinding the tape and it, it there was really um not a whole lot of it, it was uh interesting you know, the, it, we were efficient with it but it was nothing like it is today i mean like today it's like computers and computer screen like we had paper scripts you know in a booth with a microphone headphones a music stand and then watching a tv screen through the booth window to dub and match the flaps of the japanese uh renditions of the shows so this one i was working on was dragon ball z and then i finished that and was asked to voice goku in dragon ball which was again a whole nother show i'd never heard of <laughs> before um and then you know being a smaller company and already being there for your session um i was asked to do a lot of the background voices for different episodes you know women screaming children crying uh i happened to fall upon the role of east kai in dragon ball z as well which is completely different than goku's voice 100%. I think. yeah oh boy <laughs> <laughs> they showed me a picture of her and i was like oh well let's Let's try. Yeah, you know, take a stab at it, and I just, I just did that voice, and they loved it. That's so, awesome. One of my, one of my voices in my arsenal of life, of living life, and and taking, you know, ideas from voices I had heard either in my family or growing up and moving around and and things like that. So, yeah. Um, well, moving around probably helped a little bit with the voice acting too, hearing different people talking and stuff like that. But um, different accents, yeah. and yeah, different age groups of different types of styles of the voice. I um. But uh, the nuances of the voice were something that I think I just was naturally good at recognizing. Like, if I think I can do a, a voice or I can mimic, I won't do it unless I know I can do it, like, hand balls on. Like, I've got to be, like, nails. Gotcha. Or I won't even say I can do it. You know what I mean? I'm just yeah. very – my ear, like, I know if it sounds close to what it's supposed to sound like or not. And that's where, like, my mimicking skills kind of come in. And I'm like, eh, not, if I can't ace it, I'm not going to do it, you know? That's awesome. So I started Im Im imitating Beavis and Butthead and the South Park characters and then just various other ones along the way, King of the Hill. And so I have fun doing some of that. And For sure. So I'm always challenging myself every time I hear something new, if I can, you know, capture the nuance of a, of a certain voice. And uh, so, yeah, the so character voices are more fun for me. For sure. You got that uh, professional mentality, just always working technically. Always improving myself and in, in not just my lines of work, but as, as, as a person, you know, just trying to be a better person, be the best version of yourself. For sure. Which is good. I think we can all do that on a daily basis. Absolutely. So you got in, so you started with Gohan's voice during the Ginyu Saga, correct? Yes. So how far did you get with Gohan? Like how, how I know that, I know they replace people all the time, but how far did you get with Gohan? I ended up uh, the voice of Gohan um, throughout that uh, rest of uh, the entire uh, 
that saga, I guess, Frieza saga. And then um, I actually was able to um, voice Gohan through the Cell Saga. So oh, that so was, that big Kamehameha was you too, huh? Yeah, yeah. Wow. I, I, yeah, I look back now and it's like, oh, well, I guess this is, you know, I just showed up to work. You know, you just go up for your session. It's like, what are we doing today? You don't even know. I mean, you just show up and then you dive in, follow direction and give it your best. And uh, that voice was very, very difficult to do. But, but I mean, mainly just because... Uh, prolonged use of the voice and really grovelly, you know, you know, for yeah. hours and hours and screaming exactly. and um, talking extremely low. And here I am a female, first of all, and I'm like a, a high soprano vocalist when mm. I was, you know, doing these, these roles. So it was, um, it was challenging, but, uh, but I loved every minute of it and uh, was very honored to take on that role. Cause it, for me, it was a completely different voice. Um, the cell saga go on. Absolutely. Um, I mean, it just sounds completely different. I mean, some of the lines may have been similar, and that's fine. But, uh, yeah, so then – and then we uh, were able to go back from the very, very beginning and and have the full cast start with episode one and then all the way up to the, the Ginyu saga. So I was able to complete that cast with my other castmates uh, so that it was all the same cast for Dragon Ball Z. That's awesome. But once uh, Gohan grows up, goes to co or high school um, – the uh, the voice is was granted to Kyle Bear to voice Gohan as an adult. Yep, awesome. Yeah. So what I heard was you started you did Dragon Ball after you got started with Dragon Ball Z, correct? After. After. Yep. So yeah, uh, a year or two after. Year or two after. Okay. So how um, was it going from like Gohan back to you know his dad? Like, did, did it just kind of feel natural? Did you how did you change the voice in order to encapsulate? Because right. you know it's kind of similar families. Did you kind of use that as an inspiration for that? Um, I just followed the direction and uh, was given um, a, a background story um, so that I could actually, you know, dive into um, tap into my acting skills to come through the voice as a child that's extremely innocent. Um, I absolutely fell in love with Goku. <laughs> right. Being that he's funny, he's innocent, he's silly, he's the little boy I could never be. And I could like channel this, you know, I had brothers. I had uh, two stepbrothers and a brother. And on my dad's side in another state, I had another stepbrother and a stepsister. So, but mostly boys around me everywhere, you know, and then my, you know, kids down the street, you know, I hung out and was a tomboy for a while. So I, I had definitely had um material there to 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 derive a voice from and then we kind of basically pitched everything up took some of the rasp out um and that was a lot uh a lot easier on my on my voice not that it was something i wouldn't consider yeah you know, i'm always up for a challenge but it worked out to where you know it was just not as hard on my voice and it didn't do as much damage to my vocal cords and i was singing all throughout the recording of all of this stuff with the, that show band and, and so in and out of touring anywhere from three to three days to, to a month at a time i'd be on the road so i was constantly using my voice and um that was keeping my chops up so i was able to like really kind of tackle some of those harder uh screams and yells and lines of whatever because i had you know and, and and the rasp came naturally too because I was singing so much that my voice naturally lowered as I got older anyway. So um yeah, in fact, sometimes when I laugh around the fans at like the Comic Cons, they're like, Oh my gosh, you kind of sound like you laugh like Gohan or you laugh like Goku. <laughs> I'm That's like, Yeah, great. I guess I kind of do. <laughs> the laughing is the most showing. So yeah, that's kind of how all that went down. I just followed direction and then uh, just had a lot of fun with that. A lot of fun. And I, I personally love comedy. Mm -hmm. So I was uh, being able to, to do a character that wasn't so serious all the time was um, fulfilling for me personally. Absolutely. I had a lot of fun with that part of it. Absolutely. So I know that back in the day, you guys were pretty much in a booth watching a TV screen from the music stand. Did you guys ever get together and talk about your characters or anything like that? Or was there any collaboration between you and your uh, uh, oh. co-stars? Uh, early, yes, there was quite a bit of that early on. The company was really small yeah. and there was like, um, one, one booth to record in. Oh, and wow. Okay. Share, we would just share, you know, the times, uh, you know, business hours, mostly, you know, 10 to six or whatever, um, break for lunch. Um, and I would see, uh, the other voice actors that were involved and other directors in the hallway in between breaks and then, um, coming and going. And then as the company grew, there was uh, Studio A, then Studio B, then Studio C. So then we had three going at once. More properties were acquired. Um, Blue Gender, um, what was it? Kitty Grade and some others. And I was so excited to uh, not only 
be a voice actor there, you know, on the on the regular, but also um, through the contacts with Brave Combo out of Denton, Texas, um, Carl Finch was asked to put together some of the anime themes in English. So I was able to participate in um, creating the lyrics from the Japanese translation into English so that it would be like more like make sense in English uh roll Follow the melody lyrics. yeah with the lyrics that convey the, the same meaning and that are also somewhat of a rhyme that kind of makes sense as and, and would come across as a song so and in doing so I was asked to sing some of the themes so that was something I got to do that uh combine not just the you know the voice acting under the same umbrella but also to be able to access those those singing skills and um, I directed a couple of singers as well so that they could shake it up and, you know, have different singers, you know, involved and with like Blue Gender, Yu Yu Hakusho. First one I did was the uh, Sayonara Bye Bye theme, which I think is the, one of the endings to uh, Yu Yu Hakusho. Okay, cool. A lot of, it's crazy because a lot of my fans don't, uh, or the listeners of my work don't realize I'm a singer, you know, and that that's something near and dear to my heart. And I like to do both and juggling both is, is has been very fulfilling. Absolutely. So yeah. we are live. We do have so, uh, some people in. We have a couple of questions to ask you real quick. Okay. So do you have a favorite audition? That's a little bit of a weird question, but do you have a favorite audition? Because I know you get little slips to read. Well, kind of talk about one of your favorite times of auditioning. Um, well, there's there's a couple I can come up with. Um, uh, but as far as Funimation, like I said, that the audition for East Kai was... Mm. Uh, just kind of thrown in my lap. I was already there. We were wrapping up the session. It's like, hey, we think we know who we're gonna cast as East Kai. What do you think? Here, here's what she looks like. Throw us something crazy um, and over the top. And so I just said, oh my, how about this voice? <laughs> and they loved it. And um, I liked that the company at the time. I'm not sure what's up with them now. Another crunchy role, but. Um, Paying attention to the voices and that them sounding completely uniquely different is something that I liked about the English dub of, of of what you know with my experience. And so the fact that you know she sounded completely different was probably a huge part of why I was cast as that character because it sounded nothing like Oku at all, nothing like Gohan. Mm -hmm. So um, it, which is great because that's that's what I feel like in some ways is my specialty is is the character voices. Absolutely. So, um, so that was my favorite audition because it was fun. And then th there was one for a German English teacher. So I was like, what about a German English teacher? Which yeah. it's funny for me, for to me anyway, that a German, you know, person would speak English and then teach it. So it's like, well, what would that sound like? So it's like, please open your textbooks to the page 24, which I don't know if that's German or not, but they liked it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very small part, but it was fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, well, there's another question we'll get to a little bit later. Um, okay. kind of talk. All right. So I, I kind of noticed, am I, are we allowed to talk about Vance and the Valiants? Oh, of course. Vince, Vance and the Valiants. Do you want to turn that light on? Maybe it's kind of dark in here. Uh Oh, what happened? Did we clock out? No, we still see. I still see. Oh, I see. Oh, there's a screen. There we go. Okay. Gotcha. okay. A little bit better. It's kind of dark in here. Yeah. So Mood lighting. <laughs> Yeah. So I kind of heard something about uh, a lawsuit going against Mariah Carey. Are you part of that lawsuit or no? No, not at all. No, not at all. Uh, okay. Uh, nope. That's a um. Some, I haven't talked to Vince Vance about it personally. Okay. Um, Vince Vance is a, a near and dear friend of mine. He's practically a family member to me because gotcha. I joined the band when I was um just turning nineteen. Oh wow! And I had just turned nineteen, and I was working as in a uh, in a play. I was actually a, in a play, and he came out to hear me to see if I would be a good valiantette. Vince Vance of the Valiants feature in the Vivacious Vixens of Rock and Roll, Venus Violet and Victoria. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and so it worked out great with, with my experience being a singer, dancer, and an actress. Um, so Vince was, uh, I was on the road with a whole family of people. Um, and so these people come and go in and out based on, you know, whether they stay with the band for, but Vince Vance is the only original member that stayed the entire time. He's still there. He's had the band 50 years. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, I joined in uh, right before their 20th anniversary and was there for the 25th, 30th, 35th, 40th, and then last September, the 50th reunion. Wow. So there, he's like a family member to me. So I wish him the best in that. Um, I do feel I, it's not really, it's all speculation. Absolutely. All Absolutely. What's going to happen? It's all going to have to be done through the, uh, the, the court system Absolutely. to figure out what's up with how that's going to the outcome. But um, 
the uh, Vince Vance and the Valiant's original song, All I Want for Christmas Is You, was written and released in 1989. I hadn't even heard of the band yet. I was still in oh. high school. But um, the, the, the Mariah Carey version came out five years later. And uh, even though the, 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 the melody's different, the, the lyrics are very similar. The title's exactly the same. Mm -hmm. um, it's very hard, and it would probably be very hard for most people to think that um, the inspiration for Mariah Carey's version, um, that they hadn't heard the Vince fans. I mean, the, the lyrics are extremely similar, yeah, are. Um, but I don't know how that's going to go down. But um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's uh, a lot of people get confused because Vince fans had the first hit with it, same title, similar lyrics, different melody. Um, in fact, I was part of the band for a long time and sang that song more than I can count. Mm. I mean, I could sing it in my sleep. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the songs we did every show, no matter what time of year it was. We would we would definitely feature Vince Vance's um, "All I Want for Christmas Is You." So. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, That's but cool they, they, uh, more and more people, I mean, it was already a big hit. It still is a big hit at Christmas, and a lot of people like to hear the original version of the Vince Vance and the Valiants, All I Want for Christmas is mm -hmm. You. Um, and so, yeah, so, yeah, but I, I, I mean, I'm telling you, that was like some of the best times of my life is traveling the, the United States, all of, uh, some parts of the world for a naval base tour singing. And I mean, I, I, I eventually became like the person in charge of costumes and mentoring and finding, uh, recruiting young singers that would want to come on the road and helping them spread their wings and like, here's what you wear and, you know, just their makeup. And it, it was a lot of fun. It was, uh, I still, if Vince ever needs anybody, whether it's me or somebody else, I try to help send him, oh, I know someone who could probably do it or, or if I'm not working, I'll do it, you know, so. Yeah. You, you speak fondly of it, so I, oh, I yeah, can tell. I, I can tell you love it. Yeah. So, um, with all of this, talk about your convention experience. I know you've probably been hitting the road a lot more lately now that COVID's down, but yep. kind of, kind of talk about your your experiences with conventions. Cause I'm sure it's been absolutely insane for you. It has. I missed it in 20. Um, mm -hmm. 19 and 20 were slow. 21 started to come out of the dark. Um, my favorite thing is to be around the fans and be around people anyway. So COVID was extremely difficult for me um, emotionally. And man, I mean, not being able to go anywhere and everything being shut down and uh, not having that connection to other human beings. I mean, some people absolutely loved it. They hold up and, and were little hobbits and stuff. But I mean, even and you're know, doing that for several months and, and into a year or two, that's, that's a long time to be, you know, not around other people. I mean, I, I was like, what am I going to do today? Please let's just go to the grocery store or something. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> um, so, but you know, I, uh, I think that was a good time for everybody to just kind of like look inward. I mean, some people weren't phased at all in the sense that they were able to keep their job, um, or they were able to find ways to work from home. Um, that was a little bit difficult for me at the time, my band, uh, Moonglass, I have my own band now. Um, <laughs> It's kind of an offshoot of a band we had at the Windstar World Casino for the senior breakfast. It was called the High Rollers. Now we're uh, Moonglass. Uh, we had a bunch of gigs um, that we had to cancel. So we were working, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say necessarily full time, but, but a lot of the time we were working and performing live shows around the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And uh, we had to, to cancel a lot of those. So that was very, very uh, difficult, um, being that it was kind of our bread and butter, you know, at the time. So um, thankfully, you know, I was, I was a saver. And so like, I, I knew going into my profession that as a self-employed performer in, in the entertainment industry, that it wasn't always going to be a lot of work. It was going to be up and down, up and down. You might get paid really well for this one and maybe not so much for this one, or you might play a club and then you might play a wedding with my singing. And so, I mean, it was always up and down. So uh, I was always just really good with money and, um, I was able to survive, you know, financially, but, um, it was, it wasn't easy. I, the hardest part was just having to find ways to fill your day and be productive and feel like you're still getting something done towards whatever goal you've got in a shut a world that's shut down. Um, yeah. So, yeah, but I was real, I'm resourceful. I found ways to, you know, get out and about and, you know, walk people's dogs. And I found all kinds of things to do. And then there were some auditions and some things I could submit from home. And so that encouraged me and my business partner to set up a studio. So now we, you know, we have this really nice studio where we can record auditions and radio spots and whatever it is. Um, so yeah. And then I help people that need demo reels and people that are interested in going into voice acting workshops and stuff. So, but as far as yeah, going back to the original question, which is the comic cons. Yeah. No, I'm talk, all over the place. no, no Stephanie, talk away. <laughs> you know I, you got into. I don't know. Trust me. 
I have like I've done this a couple of times. The biggest thing I can tell is if I say something like a vague question, let the a person I'm talking to just run off on it. Roll I get some it. of the best stuff. So go ahead and talk away. Good, hopefully, if I can just keep my brain. No, you're focused. good. You're good. I'll, um, I'll bring you back if yeah. you get too far off the tracks. Reel me in if I you got have you. to. Absolutely. I'm up for it. <laughs> yeah. So the Comic Cons have been great. Um, I've actually, you know, for a long time I thought, you know, since I voiced these characters many, many, many years ago, um, there was a time when I thought that I would not nest. There wouldn't be a, a necessarily a need for me or for for me to to appear at these conventions. So it was it was very humbling to to realize that you know being cast in these roles, this show is so 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 outrageously popular even today. Yep. Um, and that a lot of the fans grew up, excuse me, watching it and listening to the, all the voices, and then that's what they hear. That's what they heard when they were growing up. So I hear a lot of people that come up in their 20s and 30s like hey you're the voice of my childhood are you one of the voices of my childhood and so it's been really f fulfilling to get out in front of the fans and sometimes with some of my og voice actor friends you know you know the balma and the and the frieza of my era and um sometimes we do events together so i've, I've actually been able to book pretty much every weekend this wow. year 20, wow. 2021 definitely got better 2022 pretty much every weekend i mean and what's happening now is a lot of comic book stores you know either have an event or they have like a grand opening and then they may say hey we want so and so and so and so um most of the stuff i've been doing is in texas but i have been traveling a little bit um i think this is the coming weekend i'm in denver uh last weekend was lake of the ozarks missouri and then i think i've got wichita kansas coming up uh the end of the month and then in july it's back to Florida. Florida's been a big one for me lately. Fort Lauderdale, Miami, Tampa, Orlando, Jacksonville. Oh. Um, yeah, and I love it because I feel like I'm going kind of back to what I was doing already in my 20s and 30s, which is traveling. On the road, so, yeah. But, but it's like, yeah, but it's like I just kind of slid back into that that role, and it's like, am I going to fly? Are we going to drive? So, I mean, I personally, I love it. And, and they're quick trips. They're not, you know, uh, long. You know, I can get back to my dog and my cats and mm. back to my life and kind of, regroup and start over so i mean i love it it's 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 really helping me um you know come out of the the covid blues you know where you're just like you're you're all just like what are we going to do and of course now we got inflation and everything else everything costs more so i i you know actively work as much as i can and i actually enjoy it but Absolutely. it's a balance you know we all have to find whatever our balance is for sure you know and so just try to where's the furthest you've traveled for a convention Oh, hands down would be Australia. You went to Australia? Australia, New Zealand. Yeah. Awesome. I was asked to, to come over there in 2002, 2004, 2012, and 2018. Oh, wow. And like I said, I did. I, I just figured, you know, I did these voices years ago. Unless I'm casting something new or there's something coming out, that's what you kind of hear on TV when there's like a talk show there. They have guests that are, you know, announcing some new project or something that's going on. So for me to be back in the con scene is, it's like, crazy awesome it's like wow people i mean they like me i mean i did this stuff years ago you know but i'm also always you know on the lookout for the next big thing and you know whether it's you know disney or i mean i did okko for a little bit um a little bit Denver. that's a ton you had, you had a ton of work for okko didn't you okko well i did i helped them with the um the developmental lakewood plaza turbo which was the pilot and then it got picked up and so i was involved in the first eight episodes mm -hmm. and um so yeah the first eight episodes. um you know i wasn't local to, to la and at the time they really wanted to deal with a local cast so okay but it was a great opportunity, and I'm I'm definitely not um, closing the door to anything like that. I mean, uh, I definitely haven't retired, you know, just because no, some of us get replaced, you know, with Kind Super. I'm not involved in Kind Super, but um, yeah, I'm, I haven't. No, I'm I'm not. I'm actually kind of just beginning in a way. I'm like, because um, I have a lot of different ideas and things that I want to do, and I want to get back into the the singing jingles and writing novelty songs. There's some stuff on YouTube, Kids Christmas, Halloween Rocks. There's some stuff I wrote for morning show radio years ago, parodies, you know, like Weird Al Yankovic stuff where you change the lyrics and make it funny and okay. then you sing like the original artist. So I've got some stuff that I've done, you know, some Britney Broccoli Spears parody. I did one for American My Doll airing monthly on Fox. And I did a whole song about a moment like this when Kelly Clarkson, you know, just Great. funny stuff like, yeah, yeah you know, I just, I, I, I was a big fan of uh, Weird Al Yankovic okay. growing up. And I'm actually Polish too. Nadalny's Polish. So he's <laughs> Polish. And anyway, I got really involved in doing funny stuff like that. And, and, um, um, as a result, it's kind of looking back, it's kind of been like a resume, not just something you write on paper, but like the actual experience of coming up with these concepts and being creative with them and then making them funny and stuff. So I, it would be a dream job for me to ha have like a little 
deal where I can write parodies and jingles and make them funny and produce them, you know, which it's, who knows? I mean, I just have to get the right people and the right equipment and the right musicians and whatever to, to do it. Cause it has to come out quick Absolutely. because it's topical, it's current. And then that's it. But Absolutely. So I do it for fun. Anyway, in my car, I'll change the lyrics and make them funny. And, awesome. You know. Fun stuff. So we did have another question. Uh, what is your favorite uh, voice line ever? Do you have a favorite quote that you like to do? Oh my, there's so many. Mm -hmm. Um, there's so many that I can't even count for Goku. He's just so hilarious. Um, I think it's funny when he says things like, um, Yoo-hoo, Master Roshi, there's a girl downstairs. You're stinky. You know, when he comes out of the bathroom. Yeah. And, um, just the lines about not knowing what a girl is. And, um, you know, I thought all, I thought everyone had a tail. Oh, well, like, no big deal. You know, he doesn't, it's nothing phases him. He's just... Just whatever. And the innocence and the humor um, are great. And, I, you know, the the line I get a lot of, uh, to ask to, like, you know, write on an autograph or, a, a you know, a print or a poster is or a pop toy is something, you know, something like, why do girls have butts on their chest? You know, or why do women have butts on their chest? Whatever it really is. I get asked to, yeah. Yep. So they're just, he's just funny. Yeah. So those are my personal favorite. But for Gohan and the Cell Saga, definitely like, I'm my father's son or something like that. Uh, hope that wasn't too no, bad. but um, perfect. I got yeah. you. I got you tied in right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, you know, just the really intense lines that I personally find inspiring. Now that I look back at the work I did and when I listen to it and I apply it to my life, it's like I kind of came out of the depths of kind of being bullied and being the new girl all the time. And then go home was kind of the same way. And then he finally can't. He just can't take it anymore. And then he seizes the moment. And you know, so and then there's victory. He's victorious and. Um, so I can, you know, I liked a lot of the lines that where he was protective of the ones he loved and he had to find some strength that, that was within that he didn't even know was there really, because he never really kind of believed in himself. So, you know, the fans always have something unique, but I do get asked for similar lines, you know, a lot, or they'll say, Hey, you pick something, you write what you want. I'm like, well, okay. Of, of the millions you said, right? <laughs> right. I mean, it's been so long since I recorded it. It's not, it's not something I can just tap. I mean, I'd have to like, look up, you know, we, we go through these scripts pretty quick oh, years, yeah. years and years and years ago. Yeah. And so I'd have to, I mean, I even have VHS tapes of Dragon Ball Z uh, at home in a box and it's like, we may have to talk and see if I can so get vintage. one off of you next week. Yeah. Vintage. So like my nieces are 18 and 22. And when I was, when they were growing up, I was doing the voices, you mm -hmm. know, back then when they were little 99 and then the second one she was born in 2003 so they did they just knew i did funny voices and sang all the time and now that they're older they're like stephanie do you realize that like you can your autograph is going for this much and this that you know your imdb page <laughs> and wikipedia uh, you know with google and everything you know but uh i didn't even know all that was going on i really didn't i was just going to work and singing in a band and staying busy and um now i'm like wow look at that there's like people love this show i mean they just yeah i mean some people don't, and uh, that's fine. But mm -hmm. the ones that do, man, those anime fans are die hard, devoted. Yes, they are, and they bring some of the coolest stuff to these conventions. They bring like stuff that's original, or their original artwork, or somebody that they commissioned. Um, some things are framed, some things are ginormous. I mean, it it's fun to see what the fans come up with. Uh, that's a, another interesting facet to doing these um, in person appearances and comic cons. Yeah. It's fun. And Has then it, interacting with the other guests is fun too. Sure. Have you, like you said, people have brought you stuff. Like what's the weirdest thing somebody brought that was original or I guess most unique. Um, let's not go with weird. Let's go with most unique, I guess. Most unique is, mm, well, someone brought this. I want to say it was like a fiberglass shield. It was, gi it was giant mm. and they had two of them. They had one, of Frieza and one of Super Saiyan Gohan. Okay. And I signed it, but it, I mean, it literally was huge. Wow. And, and I mean, it, I mean, I had to have somebody help me hold it to take a picture because it was so heavy. So that was kind of like the most unique thing somebody had made. Yeah. And then I sometimes get um, people drawing or painting their rendition of what they, you know, think Kid Goku or Kid Gohan is. And so I have some of those. In, Every once in a while, uh, someone will bring me a copy of something they made as a gift. And then I just like, well, here, let me sign it. And it's kind of like a little trade. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's 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 near and dear to my heart because that's some something a fan created. And it's like, 
you know, right now I'm living in a hotel because our, our house flooded. So oh. everything's packed. But once I do get back into a home, um, I'm hoping to have a room that's not just an office and a studio and all of that, but also something where I can, um, you know, highlight those features and frame some things that mean a lot to me. And, uh, you know, have like everything on a shelf. And so right now it's like, ah, it's disarray. But there'll, there'll be a good time for when that that time comes sure. decorate like have like a studio and like you know i've got a keyboard i want to like write some music and uh, right now it's kind of an in-between limbo time hear that hear that so yeah. we're getting kind of close to the end so let's let's do one big thing that i always do with everybody is what is one thing you would tell someone getting into voice acting or in this case since you also sing let's let's go ahead and split those up let's go with uh give okay. some advice for voice acting and give some okay. advice for singing um, my personal advice is, uh, practice your craft. Um, you know, for me, I was doing it for fun all my life growing up as a kiddo. Um, listen back record. There's so many, um, opportunities to record yourself, listen back, hone in on something, uh, that, you know, like what, if it's character voices or radio, or do, if you were trying to secure an agent to get auditions, there's all kinds of things you can do, but the, uh, the best thing to do is, to pack your resume, um, get involved in theater. There's workshops online. There's acting classes. Now that there's, you know, we're coming out of COVID. There's, there's just, there's things online that you can do. You don't have to leave your house. Um, and there's probably more that I can even come up with myself. Um, so just uh, hone in on what you want to do, and then get a demo done that you can have done either somebody in house, or you can you know, go online and see if there's somebody that you can even send the files, record what you think is good, have somebody chop it up, make it sound really great and have like a really nice demo of featuring your range. It can be anything from commercials to character voices, um, just rattled all off in a row. Um, doesn't even need to be even a minute long, just featuring, you know, some people want to do audiobooks. They just want to sit in their underwear and drink coffee and record audiobooks. And then you can go in and learn how to edit your own files and you can chop things up. You can, you know, add things take out some of the mouth noises or the you know the background sounds that you know fortunately i have a business partner that does this for me he's going to teach me how whenever i can he can get me to sit down Super easy. and not be all over right you know it, copy yeah. paste you know it's just a matter of sitting down and doing it and then i've been so spoiled because um you know i'm there for him if he needs a voice actor for something at his radio station and then i'm he's there for me for that and anyway it, it works out great uh so, you know, I, I personally don't know how to do any of that just yet. That's that's next on the agenda. But there's people that can help uh, help people get into the industry and help them, you know, on their path. There's no real rule book for it. You could be really good and not get a, a shot at something or you might just not be the right voice for a specific thing. And you just have to prepare yourself for a lot of no's. Same thing with music. The music industry is very cutthroat. There's a lot of talent out there. I'm finding in my career personally that more people um, can sing than can really be a, a really good solid character voice actor, which I think has actually put me on the mat more than my singing, which I thought would be flip flopped, but mm. you never know. It's like, Hey, not complaining by any means, but yeah, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of talent out there all over all over the world, and it's just a matter of finding what it is you want to do. If you want to write music, you want to write and sing it. Do you want to, you know, work with another songwriter? Um, do you want to put together a demo for that? I mean, some people put together demos to be a demo singer, and even that's great exposure. Someone might hear your voice and be like, "Who is that? Like, who's singing? That's a I like that voice." So, I mean, I mean, I went just walking down the streets of Nashville trying to make it as a singer when I was like literally 25 years old. I had no idea what I was doing. I just had what I thought was a good demo. Um, a lot of times at that time in the 90s, it's like, no, you need to move to Nashville or you need to move to LA or you need to move to New York. So, I mean, location can have a, a definitely have a play in it. I, like I said, I'm in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and thankfully I do have, you know, more options than I would had I stayed in a small town. You know, who knows if I would have stayed there on my own, but uh so there's there's all kinds of um, my more than ever. I mean, at the touch of a button on your phone, or you can do a Google search. But my my uh, my personal experience was practicing a lot. I mean, even though it was for fun, I was doing it all the time. And to this day, I'll I'll mimic something I hear on TV, or I'll mimic a, a, a jingle, and and it's just it's just I just have an affinity for it. It's just a natural thing. So the more somebody does something, the better they're naturally going to be at it. And um, yeah, and you might land an audition that just shoots you to the top, and uh, 
you know, Disney or something. I don't know. I mean, it's, but it's very cutthroat. So um, prepare yourself to, to um, you know, it might be hard to really get into it. It's, I mean, I couldn't get into jingles forever because the, the doors were shut and everybody knew each other. And it was like really hard to get in to that particular pr profession. But that's why it's like, sometimes you got to do what you don't want to necessarily do it for a living to be able to pay your bills until you can. You know, it might need to be kind of a hobby to start. And then once you kind of get a, a big break, but don't limit yourself. And being a voice actor, you don't, you can be any age. I mean, I, you don't have to be a child to get started. You can be any age to, to go into this profession. I think the music, the music uh, business is much more hard on age as far as like marketing a pop singer or, or something like that. I think most will. I don't know, shy away from somebody that's older. Uh, I mean, I don't know. There's also competitions on TV, but then some of them have age limits. I know I was just too old for American Idol years ago. So it's like, you know. Maybe got talent now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's got to be something. But exactly. yeah, there's there's a lot of outlets for, for getting discovered. Absolutely. You know, they're Absolutely. good at something. You know? just, Justin Bieber was a YouTuber, so. Yeah, I know. Oh, I would have loved to have you too when I was young. Absolutely. Oh, I'd have been all over that. All right. Well, Stephanie, thank you so yeah. much. Where can we find you social media wise? I have a website. Finally. Oh, there Yay. We go. Awesome. Uh, StephanieNadalny.com. Um, I am on Facebook, Instagram, and I do have a TikTok. Um, so much fun. I'm still learning a lot, lot. I have a lot to learn. But uh, my TikTok is uh, at Steph Nadalny. Just. Okay. S T E P H and then my last name N A D O L N Y and then uh, Facebook voice actress Stephanie Nadalny. There's um most that's those are the ones that I'm focusing on right now. In between travel is the um the Instagram and um the TikTok is a lot of fun. And then my Facebook is there for whatever I've been on there forever because then that keeps me you know in touch with all of my schoolmates that I grew you know grew up with moving around so absolutely yeah, it's pretty easy to find me i think i've got a wikipedia page and imdb we're slowly adding some of my music i've got a whole album of music from 1997 that is unbelievably cool oh, wow. that i would like to get up online i'm just going to see if i can uh, figure out a way to do that hit yeah, up um, spotify absolutely get that stuff out there yeah and the kitty grade theme opening and closing i did some um some of those anime themes we're slowly putting those on the website as well so it's in the beginning stages uh we'll be adding a lot of stuff over the coming months and appearances and things like that as well Awesome. Well, thanks again, Stephanie. And guys, make sure you uh, link, follow. All the links will be at the below in the YouTube. And then also, obviously, we're here on Twitch. Yay! Yeah. This was fun. Yep, thanks thanks again. for having me. All right. We have str we're streamed out.